Got some puppies. Yep, so Thor's a dad. Hey, buddy. I see ya. It looks like he's still trying to use the eye. Uh, <laughs> the good thing is, is that the white has shrunk, but there's obviously still some swelling. He probably is gonna have a scar there, and it, it may be kind of a permanent damage to his eye. He may have gotten it that bad. It is a miracle, just like Cole said, that she's still here with us a month and a half later. You come out here one day, and she may be laying down and never gonna get up again. And then we've got another issue that recently came up. So, <sighs> been a rough summer. Hey guys, Dusty Baker with Cross Timbers Bison. Welcome back to the channel. Got Marissa and Cole and Maya and Jackie. Here's the Big Joe herd coming in. They heard the uh, ATV. We are actually gonna give them some cues real quick, but we're going to check Dunbar, our main man and uh, give you a big update on his eye. And uh, we're gonna show you the difference of how, how far it's come along. We're gonna get up close and personal to Dunbar and show you, show you his eye. Hey, Joe. Up in your face, Big Joe. Yeah. All right, so Dunbar's eye is looking a lot better and I've, I've seen it really change about quite, a, quite dramatically in the past two weeks or so. Um, it, when Marissa and I first came out here, it looks like August 25th, I took pictures of his eye and sent it to um, Doc Parsons. It was really, really cloudy. It was like almost his entire eye was white and of course it brought us some concern uh you know what was going on but we also know that noticed that he had a lot of um drainage on his eye too as well there he is hey buddy i see ya. it looks like he's still trying to use the eye uh <laughs> but it uh cole was able to get some close-ups of his eye and when we zoomed in and really looked at it, you could see that um, the white part is actually shrinking. And we've noticed that in the past two weeks, it's gone down because, I guess let me back up. A day after Marissa and I saw him and noticed his injury, Doc said it was probably a really good injury to his eye. Next day, we went and bought a dart gun at our local feed store. And then we bought the darts. And then I, I also, the next day, was able to get Draxon, which is really hard to get. And I've explained that in that video. Uh, Draxon is, an, is a very strong antibiotic, and uh, it's not over-the-counter anymore. So it's very hard to get, and you have to have a prescription for it. Well, we end up getting some Draxon. All we needed was 10 cc's of it. Didn't need to buy an entire bottle because it's very expensive. I was able to get 10 cc's of it. We came out here, I think, the next day. So this is day two after we've seen his eye, somewhere in that range. Within 24 hours. Yeah, it was, you know, had to go buy a dart gun. That was, it's, it, those are expensive. Needed one probably anyways. The darts, and then get a, finally get a hold of the Draxon. Come out here, we darted him. And then, so after about two to three weeks, we started to see that milky white start to shrink. and and go away some. So uh, now it's been, I don't know, three or four weeks since then. Um, and we've seen it change, but when Cole got some close-ups on him, you could see the, the lateral part of his pupil um, ha is protruding out. So I don't know if that's part of the swelling of his actual eye, but it's right at his pupil and you can, see that it, the white has definitely shrunk and that we can't tell if he's using it or not because if some animals come to his left it i don't know if he can really see them that well but for sure his right is completely fine but when he comes up to me sometimes he turns and he uses that eye uh, just like you know for cubes like he just did um, but there is you could definitely see the protrusion out around his pupil um, where it actually still is very white so 
Uh, the good thing is, is that the white has shrunk, but there's obviously still some swelling. He probably is going to have a scar there, so he may not be able to have a you know 2020 vision or or a 100% clear vision, and it, it may be kind of a permanent damage to his eye. He may have gotten it that bad, so we won't know that. But you also got to think about it. You know, you got to treat it like a bone. It's going to take a long time to heal. It's not just a cut, you know, on your arm that can heal in about two weeks. That's an eyeball. That's a very, very um, tender part of their body. Um, it's very sensitive. And so I'm sure it's going to take a while for it to fully heal. And we just have to keep an eye on it. And I asked Doc if we needed to dart him again, and he said no. He said if he's showing signs that he's getting better, then, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. I also had a, a couple of questions about, you know, using antibiotics. Um, there's, there's two things that we have to understand here. Um, so on bison, the thing is, is we don't use hormones and we don't use antibiotics. Now, when you say that, that's for production animals. So those are your animals that are being processed for meat, value-added products, and, okay? None of those animals should have hormones in them. No, no bison in general should have hormones in them. And uh, antibiotics, they shouldn't have antibiotics. And plus, if you do have, let's say you have a sick one, and it is in your production, which is your meat side, you can give it an antibiotic, but you have to wait according to that vaccination, whatever that antibiotic is, 45 to 60 days before you process them so that it runs through their entire system so that it's not in the meat when you process them. Now, on the other side of this, that's if you want to use antibiotics. We saw an injury. He's our breed bull. He's, he's kind of our, you know, our main guy. This is a guy I started with concerned about him you want it to get better it's breeding season or it was breeding season probably still at that time he needs to be getting better so that's why we went with the antibiotic plus we asked doc parsons who, who's like almost the vi the bison vet uh, the guy knows his stuff when he says to give him draxin that's what you do and so that's what we did he's obviously showing signs of, of getting better uh, but if he does have a scar he has a scar so on the other side of it you have your breeding side. So this is a breeding herd. None of these animals right here will be in our processing side of it, the production side. And so giving him an antibiotic is to make him better. All right? it, it's, he's not gonna be slaughtered. So it's, it's not gonna be used that way. But um, sometimes you have to give them these uh, you know, vaccination. You know, we have to warm them every year to, to make sure that their gut is healthy because parasites can kill them. Um, in the south, those are things that we deal with. You can see it looks like he's still trying to use his eye some. Hey, buddy. Here. Oh, your tongue is rough. You gotta hurry up. <laughs> so just, just, you know, people question, you know, using vaccinations and stuff. Just to be clear, that's what that vaccination was. Is, uh, you know, it's just like if uh, if you get sick, you know, you some you sometimes have to take as humans. Okay, back up, buddy. As humans, we have to take antibiotics to get better. You know, like amoxicillin or something. If you have a, if you have a cold or a, an infection in your body, you have to take antibiotics. It's the same thing with with uh, animals like him. As long as you manage the animal and it's healthy, you're doing the right things. So we'll keep we'll keep our eye on him. But we gotta go to the lynch place now. We got some more issues over there, and then uh, we're gonna check up on our Texas cow and uh, see how she's doing. I think, well, she, she, had, uh, she had 11. She's lost one. She lost one. Yep, so Thor's a dad. Come here, Thor. 
Can you, buddy? Can you smile? Can you smell Thor? Can you smell? There's a little bit of it. Oh yeah, look what Thor's got. He's got some. He's a dad now. Got some puppies. Well, Brooks didn't have enough chickens or horses or bison, so <laughs> more cats. Yeah, you got cats and puppies now. So Fiona has always been here, and then you got old Thor. You had to bring Thor over because he was running off all the time. Jackie's been staying at the barn most of the time. But Thor was going on some adventures with Jackie. So we brought Thor over here, and he has not left. And luckily, they already had a female here that they've just had forever. And um, Thor's a dad now, and we got 10 puppies. So, But we came over here um, at the original place now. Um, to check on our Texas cow. I haven't talked about her in a while. Kevin mostly spends his time over here taking care of him. Um, and then we'll check on her. And then we've got another issue that recently came up. So, <sighs> been a rough summer. We'll go check her out real quick. <laughs> All right, so this is... Uh, this is mom and Kevin's rural water hydrant here. It's leaking a little bit. We got to replace the handle, but we've got this running. We've had to rig this up because our well that we got going a couple years ago, you guys can go back and watch it. Um, I guess a couple, I guess it was maybe two years ago or so. Uh, Kevin and I set three large water tanks on this place. We trenched a thousand feet of one inch pipe from our well. This well existed on this property before mom and Kevin got it. But then we had this water and we had it tested and it was pumping out like 30 gallons a minute two years ago and uh, it was doing great. And so we built a complete water system on it. There's one right here that we have in our main corral. We've got one that we're in another uh, paddock for our bulls typically where Eleanor's bull was. And then in the back, that splits two fences, we have another one. And it's worked so good, hands off basically. But uh, a couple weeks ago, and we can go look at this well. This well was doing really good. And we had kind of started having some problems with it. And so we thought maybe it was an old pressure tank that's in here. And then we had Jerry, uh, a good friend of ours, come over. He's kind of a water guy. And so he came over and looked at it. And him and Kevin spent a couple hours in this well house. Um, and we figured out that, well, it's an old hand dug well. What they realized is about 30 or 35 feet deep, somewhere in there, they could see mud and uh, no water. Everything had been working, but uh, this sucker is completely dry. This old hand dug well, we weren't sure how deep it was. We just knew that there was water here. So the difference between the Ponderosa and Mom and Kevin's place is this is the east side of Sulphur. Um, really like the east side of the park and everything. We're sitting on an aquifer, a huge aquifer called the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer here. On the west side of town, if you guys can go back and watch too, we recently had two water wells drilled. Uh, we tried to hit water on that side of town, and uh, which is really Davis, um, and there's no aquifer over there, but we still tried to hit water. We drilled at 160 feet and quit, and then we drilled for 100 feet and missed. When we first put this uh, new pump in here, it was pumping out, like I said, 30 gallons a minute, but it hit it 33 feet is where the pump was sitting when I had the guy out here. We just slowly dropped it down and it was pumping at 33 feet. And that's where it's been setting for years. And then um, Kevin and Jerry discovered that it was had it was setting in mud. So there's no more water in it. It's basically gone dry. It's an awesome pump house. Got new electric, a new pump. It's an old air tank that we still use. But and you can see all the new plumbing in it. It is all set up completely fine and was great. This is all new stuff, essentially. But, you know, you've got to think back and who knows how long this well's been here. And that is hand dug. 
So that's what we're dealing with is uh, it's gone dry. And so the first thing I did was like, who's drilling around us? <laughs> you know, who's somebody drilling around us and tapping into some of that water. So we're having to use mom and Kevin's real water. And we're going to need some rain for that water table to fill back up to obviously that height. So we could sit and wait on it, basically, if we wanted to. Um, you know, waiting on rainfall the past three years is not very, very likely. So this is our alternative now to keep using the water systems that we already have established. And so we're not hauling water and stuff is Kevin's got a hose running from his rural water line, I don't know, 50 yards right back in there where we were. Okay. And tapping into uh, our hydrant that runs off of this water world. So we put this here in case we wanted to just water animals right here. So we just have it open now with a handle here. And these lines, this is kind of the main line <laughs> that comes from the water well. And it runs down and out and it branches off is what it does here from this. So he just has it open. And so they're getting good, fresh, clean water from the rural water, but it costs a lot more money. We're not obviously running our electric out of the water well, but um, it's nice that they're still getting, we're still using those water systems. They're getting fresh water, but it also costs mom and Kevin. Of course, we'll help them pay for that bill. Um, since we're having to use the water now. So here's alternative two. Alternative two would be, and I've already talked to the well guys that came and tried to hit water at the Ponderosa. And I explained to them the situation that's going on. And they said that they could come over here and drill. And uh, wherever they hit, they could drill next to it because we are sitting on the aquifer, like I said. it well, They should be able to hit it. I don't know the depth considering that hand dug was at 33 feet the water's there obviously with the three-year drought that we've been in um it's dropped some and it didn't hit us until now that we're dealing with it but they could drill around this well and basically what would happen is you can leave everything in, in that well house and you could pump out of the new well is what they said so i thought that that was good you don't have to make a whole new well house you don't have to set a new pump and stuff. Somehow you can just pull from the new well into your new well house and it'd go back into your system is, is what they said. They said, you can drill over here and then move it. You know, you can run it and pull it from your new hole into your uh, existing. So I thought, okay, well, maybe we need to get those guys over here because we know there's an aquifer here. We know there's water here, right? There has been for the past two to three years. Um, it's just dropped. The water tables dropped that much. Um, and uh, water is becoming a very important thing here in Oklahoma. Very important, especially for farmers and ranchers. Now, we're lucky that we don't have to run pivots and stuff. Um, and we're not using much water as some of those farmers are. Thankful for farmers. But, you know, to water our bison and give them fresh water because there's no ponds here on this property. So that's why we had to establish the water systems. And it's it's just easier you know you don't have to go out and water them every day you just check the pumps and make sure the flow valves are good and all that so part of ranching right not talking about water and all the problems there let's go check on our texas cow of course when you go through that dramatic of a you know of, of having a dead calf inside of you and then us trying to remove as much as we could um you know that's pretty dramatic and stressful on that animal and so she was under a lot of stress the bad part about her is um there probably is some damage done to it um at least her birthing cavity um could have been some damage to her internally um overall i'm no vet but I did talk to my vet and I have talked to Gerald several times about her and um, he's given me options on what I could do with her. And, um, you know, this is one of those things. It's like, I've talked about it before. You got, do you put her out there? She comes in heat, 
she gets pregnant again, and then she has a calf. Uh, if she has a calf, there may be so much damage inside of her where she can't get pregnant or two, she does get pregnant and then aborts another calf. So we're back to square one and I don't want to make her go through that again. And, um, you know, is she going to have another dead calf inside of her? Could all this be wonderful and she come back and have a calf and everything be 100%? That's a slim chance of her um, carrying a calf and actually having it, it's very slim because of the damage that's probably done to her. It's a miracle she's still alive. So um, do you keep her? She's part of your um, your program, your, your, your processing side of it um, is pretty much left or she just becomes a pet, um, which, you know, from a ranching standpoint, that eats into your budget because now she's eating your feed, she's eating your grass, she's drinking the water, um, and you know, that could be replaced with another healthy mama that can have calves. So you got to look at that from, you know, from a, uh, from your heart standpoint, which I'm kind of soft hearted when it comes to my animals and everybody knows that about me, but then you have to look at it from a financial standpoint is this, do we need to keep her? So there's lots of options to look at, but it uh, really just comes down to, I don't know what it comes down to. There's really a just a miracle that she's even here and we even have these options. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, Doc told me when we brought her over here and worked her, he said if she lays down in the squeeze chute, she's probably going to die. And she told us that there was something wrong with her. You know, when we brought her, she was the first one to come to me. So I, when I loaded her up out in that pasture with Big Joe, so she knew something was wrong with her. But he said... If she lays down in that squeeze chute, she's probably gonna die. She laid down three times and got up all three times and came into this pen right here where we started feeding her and she started her recovery process. And uh, guys, that cavity started to close and I, we got as much out as possible. So if she hasn't got rid of everything, there's probably a good chance that there still may be stuff inside of her. And But it is a miracle, just like Cole said that she's still here with us a month and a half later. And she looks healthy. Her hair looks good. She acts normal. She poops and pees normal. Um, but- she's rubbing on a gate. She's like rubbing normal. on a gate. <laughs> um, she still has an attitude just like she had before. So she's showing signs of recovering, but we don't know what's going on inside of her. So there could be lots of damage that we may not see. I mean, you come out here one day and she may be laying down and never going to get up again. So who knows? And then if that happens, you can't process her. So do you use the value of what she has, uh, which is meat at the end of the day, because she probably can't have a calf again. And so I don't know. <laughs> I got some decisions to make. So me and Marissa will talk about it and see what we want to do. Hard you know. decision. There's, there's worse things that could be happening to her um, right now, and she's lucky still just to be here. So, yeah, I don't know. Pretty crazy that she is still alive. Think about it. No, those dad gum. Cockaburs. Yeah, they're in here. Look at them right there. Mm. Look at those. These are all the yearling. Yeah, so we got our yearlings. Over here at Mom and Kevin's, brought them over because we need a little bit of space at the Ponderosa and I wanted them to have some grass so they came over here and they got their own space which is nice. Not a lot of grass left basically but we've uh, we've talked about building more fence over here and expanding because only, I don't know, 20 acres or so are fenced off on this place uh, from our original when we first came over and started raising bison with our first five, you know, it was plenty of ground, but then we expanded, got the Ponderosa, took the animals off of this place, had some time to rest, and so we brought them over, brought these yearlings over for more space at the Ponderosa, and, um, you know, now Yearlings the, plus one South Dakota, or is that Canada? Huh? Is that a Canada? No, it's a, uh, Yellow tag. 
It's a, actually one of our yearlings. I had, I had yellow tags one year. Huh. I didn't mean to bring her over here. I meant to keep her there, but we'll get it all figured out whenever we work them or something. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we brought them over here. They're doing their own thing, but we're talking about expanding more fence and there is some pasture still left, but Kevin and mom like their deer and we like to see the deer too. So we're going to see if we can talk them into maybe fencing off some more to, to graze and whatnot. So we'll see. Thank you guys for watching us. See you guys soon. Nora.